So now we're going to look at a connection between the cross product and the angle between two vectors. The dot product gave this, this connection between two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. Turns out that the cross product gives a connection between the two vectors and sine of the angle between them. In fact, what it says is that the magnitude of A cross B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine theta. Now that might not come as a surprise given some of the things we've stated already. So one of the things we stated is that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. And from our work up here, we have that the area of a parallelogram determined by vectors A and B is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta. So putting those two ideas together, it really says that the length of the cross product is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine theta. And so what we are doing now is we are verifying this result. We are verifying that the magnitude of the cross product is given by the parallelogram determined by the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. So that's what we are doing. We're actually verifying that result and we're going to do it in a couple of steps. The first step is to establish this connection and then the next step is to again draw the connection between the area and the right hand side of this equation. So let's go ahead and prove this. Now I'm not going to fill in all the details of this proof because it really is just a bunch of algebraic manipulation. But I'll give you the essence of how one does prove this. So the way we're going to prove this is we're going to start with the left hand side, the length of A cross B, and I'm actually going to start with the square of that. The reason I'm going to start with the square of that is because now I can write that as a dot product. It's the dot product of A cross B with A cross B. And we know from the definition of the cross product, what the components of A cross B are. So if I dot it with itself, then what I just get is a sum of the squares of the components. The first component is A2B3 minus A3B2. That would be squared. Plus the second component, and since we're squaring it, I don't really have to worry about that minus sign. Um, so the second component, all squared, is equal to a1b3 minus uh, a3b1 plus, and then the third component squared would be a1b2 minus a2b1 all squared. And again, just notice that the first component didn't involve anything with a subscript of 1, the second one didn't involve anything with a subscript of 2, and the third one didn't involve anything with a subscript of 3. Then what we do here is, and this is where I'm going to skimp on the details, we expand, so multiply everything all out, then uh, simplify, or collect terms, and factor, so a whole bunch of algebraic manipulation, but I'll give you the end target of what we actually get. And this is, once I give you the end target, it's easy to verify that um, the, these things are equal because you just expand the first one, you expand the second one, and see that all the terms match. So what we get is that it is a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared minus a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3 all squared. So if I expand that line out I just wrote, multiply everything all out, and I do the same thing for the, the previous line, expand everything all out, you'll see that all the terms are the same. So these two expressions are equal to each other. The nice thing about this second expression I wrote down is that these are in terms of magnitudes. This is the magnitude of A squared, the magnitude of B squared, or the length of B squared, minus, and that's a dot product there, that's A dot B all squared. 
But we also know that a dot product can be written in terms of the lengths of the vectors. The dot product is the length of A times the length of B times cosine of the angle between them. And this is all being squared, so I'll push the squares onto each of the pieces. And now I've got length of A squared, length of B squared in each of those terms. So I'll factor them out front. And that leaves me with a 1 minus cosine squared theta. Ah, but 1 minus cos squared theta, that's sine squared theta. So this boils down to magnitude of a squared, magnitude of b squared, times sine squared theta. And I'll just carry down the left-hand side. That's the length of the cross product squared. So now I can square root through everything. Now I just have to make sure everything's positive. When I square root, I'd like to really just say, okay, then this thing is equal to a, the length of a, length of b. All these are positive and that's fine. The problem is I need to make sure that when I square root sine squared, that that is just sine of theta and not negative sine theta. In other words, I need to know what the sine and the plus or minus sine of theta is. And it turns out it's positive. So I don't have to worry about introducing an extra minus sign there because sine theta is positive or greater than or equal to zero for theta, which is the angle between two vectors, meaning that theta is between zero and pi. If theta is between zero and pi, then sine of theta is bigger than or equal to zero. And so square root of sine squared is just sine of theta. So there's a little bit of having to deal with uh, sign analysis at the end there, but we have prevailed and we've got our formula. The magnitude of the cross product is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine theta. And that's really nice because this tells us that there's this kind of similar relationship between a cross product and the angle as there was with the dot product and the angle. Dot product was related to cosine of the angle, cross product, or the magnitude of the cross product is related to sine of the angle between the vectors. Just like we had for the dot product, we get a similar result for the cross product by analyzing when is sine of theta zero. So sine of theta is zero precisely when theta is zero or pi. In other words, when the vectors point in the same direction or in opposite directions. But in either case, that means the vectors are parallel. So the cross product is zero precisely when the vectors are parallel. So that's what we get here. So A is parallel to B, a couple of parallel lines there that uh, we read as parallel. So A is parallel to B if and only if the angle between them is zero or pi. But that only happens when sine of theta is zero. And because our relationship relating sine of theta and the cross product, which now I've just brought into view up above, this happens precisely when the magnitude of the cross product is zero. But the magnitude of a vector is zero precisely when the vector itself is the zero vector. And so following these chain of implications, we get that the vectors are parallel precisely when their cross product is the zero vector. Now we're going to come to the question about area. We now want to show that the length of the cross product is equal to the area of the parallelogram. That was just the picture we had before. The picture we had right at the very start. A, B, those vectors create a parallelogram. How would I find the area of the parallelogram? I would drop a perpendicular down here, and then I'd work out the various values. So the height of this parallelogram, if this is angle theta, then the height would be the magnitude of A sine theta. The length of the parallelogram is the magnitude of B. So we have that the area is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine of the angle between them. And from our previous result up above, that is the magnitude of the cross product. So what we have verified now are those properties that we said are the defining properties of the cross product. The cross product 
produces a vector that's perpendicular to both of the original two, points in the direction of the right-hand rule, and has a length, which is the area of the parallelogram made by the two vectors. So now let's use this to do an example. Find the area of the parallelogram determined by these vectors, 3, 0, 4, and 0, 4, 3. So let's look at a visual for this. There's our two vectors that are familiar to us from, these are the ones we did in, with the dot product. We are now interested in the area of the parallelogram that they determine. The parallelogram looks like this. So there's our parallelogram between those vectors. We want to find the area of that. So let's go ahead and compute it. So the area of the parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of the cross product. And so we can go ahead and leave the magnitudes outside if we want. We want to find the cross product of these two, 0, 4, 3, and then take its magnitude. Again, I'll write the numbers down below, 0, 4, 3. So that is, we are interested in the magnitude of, the first component is going to be 0 times 3 minus 4 times 4, so that's minus 16. The second component is negative of, 3 times 3, and then there's a 0 times 4, so it's minus 9. The last component is 3 times 4 minus 0, so that's 12. And so it's the magnitude of this, which is 16 squared plus 9 squared plus 12 squared square rooted, which is equal to the square root of 481. So there we go, a nice way to compute an area by doing this strange cross product. And, you know, in some sense it's strange. We created from two vectors this new vector, which with some sort of mixed multiplication and differences, but it turns out that that is related to the area of the parallelogram as we have now shown.